Hi there, thanks for joining today. We're gonna to be chatting with Nicole Kincaid. She's an energy work specialist that I had a privilege of being introduced to about a year ago. And since then we've worked together on a few homes that we've had on the market for sale, but also she's worked with a few of our buyers as well. So wanted to just kind of chat with her today about energy clearing. What does that mean? Learn a little bit about how she got into the work that she does now, as well as just kind of touch on a few fun stories she has in her line of work. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and hope everyone is doing well. Well, thank you for joining this morning. Totally, yeah. So uh, we initially met at one of our kind of exclusive breakfast meetings with a whole bunch of other brokers. And it was kind of, I sat right by you. And as you were talking, I got really, really excited about just the services you offer. And, and you're just such a lovely person too, and have a great energy yourself. And uh, since then, I've had you come in and do some energy clearing and energy work um, in some of the listings that we've had uh, on the market that kind of just needed needed a different feel. Um, and it was just such a great process going through that. And I know you you work with some buyers too, and just felt like wanted to have it. It's appropriate time of year uh, as we're going into fall and we're kind of in the, the you know right before Halloween, and um, you know a lot of these different things kind of come up during this time about different energy and spirits sources and all that sort of thing. And so wanted to kind of just uh, introduce you to our world. And um, not a lot of people know that kind of the energy work, space clearing, stuffology exists. And I uh, wanted to just kind of introduce you to everyone here. Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled to be here. You want to kind of roll into just defining like what, you know, uh, energy work and space clearing is? Yes. Okay. So um Energy work is basically the overall term that I use for the different things inside of it, which are space clearing and stuffology. And so um, it, I, I kind of define it as anything that I can do to help influence the energy of a home and influence how a home feels. And we're, we're all kind of aware of like how our homes feel on some level. Um, and and with stuffology, I think one a really base, a really easy kind of definition I use is it's the stuff that I work with that you can see. And then the energy work, uh, the space clearing piece is the stuff I work with that you can't see. So it's the actual like vibe of the home. Yeah. Great. And then, so um, do you want to kind of talk a little bit about how you got into this space? Okay. Yeah. That's, you know, I was kind of thinking about that lately because it comes up a lot when, <laughs> when people get to know me a little bit and about, um, about 20 years ago or so, I I started to attend a postgraduate program at Bastyr University. And um, I did that because I was really sick. And I had gone, um, I had gone on and on for months and months without resolve around like a health issue that doctors just couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. And it was really frustrating. And um, I finally went to this doctor, Ashley, and she was so serious. And I was sitting across a desk from her and she was like, I, th I think I figured out what's wrong with you. <laughs> and I'm like, great, great. Because I was just was so sick. You know, I just didn't ironically have any energy. I mean, that was actually my condition. And, um, and I'd gone through all of the tests. This has been like months and months, right? And she told me that she thought I was depressed. And I thought that was really fascinating, but I just couldn't relate to it. Like I was like, I don't, I just don't think that's it. And so I left the office and I really had this like, you know, a little personal come to Jesus with myself around, okay, so allopathic medicine doesn't get, doesn't like, that's not it. Like that, like I've, I've done, I've done my due diligence. What's going on here? And so I just started search, researching everything that had to do with like energy. Like I just took it really literal, you know, like energy and, you know, I ended up like four or five months later applying to this program at best year got in and I started healing, but I wanted, I was thinking about that story and it's a little bit incomplete. If I don't also mention that, like, I think a lot of us are a product of our childhoods and how we were brought up. And I was always this very, very, very sensitive kid. Like I was the one who you would walk into a room and I knew if someone was upset, I knew if something had gone awry, I knew if something wasn't quite right. And I mean, I didn't know that as a kid, you know, and like, that wasn't a very popular way to be as a child, you know, <laughs> but it was just who I was. And I also just really 
uh, like in my, in my family of origin, you, you, there was a lot of like need for alertness, you know, like you had to be on and we moved around a lot. I went to like 13 elementary schools and the whole thing. And so in, with that sensitivity and with like the need to be hypervigilant and on and alert in my family system, like that, that kind of gave me like this, this sixth sense, but it also like really wore my battery down after like decades. Right. Totally. I think that's what happened in my late twenties is I just, I couldn't tolerate the stress anymore. So when I went to Bastyr, long story short, I was astonished. It was the first time in my life that I started relating to energy and being like, Oh my God, I don't have to just be like a, like, a victim to this like it's coming at me and I don't know what to do with it like I actually yeah. started to learn how to actually work with the energy of spaces well it, it it got into that later but it was a really astonishing thing and when I did that it was like my Harry Potter moment I call it <laughs> because after the minute, it was like game on like I figured like I was like oh my gosh like I can I can do this I can survive I can like thrive in this world with with being able to like um, work and perceive and feel energies around me and like, and know what to do with it now. Gotcha. And so then how did you know to, um, be able to, I guess, help pe other people with that? Oh, it's really fascinating story too. So I, from the time I was 19, I had my very first stephology client and that's this work I do with cl clutter clearing and organizing, like my spin on it. And so I've always been obsessed with spaces. Like I just love spaces I and I love beauty and I love how they feel. And I've always just talked to homes and like felt like they were like living, breathing organisms. They are. They are. Yeah. yeah. And that's and funny. That's a quote that, that I, I constantly use too with, with people in the buyers, you know, houses that are old, any home structure, they're living and breathing things. They, you have they, to keep them alive. You have to feed them. You have to, yeah. Yes. Tend to them and nurture them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so I had always done this stuffology work or whatever. And so I got, I, then I get to best year and now that's like, you know, like in my, you know, like 20 years ago, a little bit more than that, actually, I think it's been 23. And, um, and I'd quit my job and all of this and to go to school. And so then I went to uh, work at a wine bar in Ballard here in Seattle, Washington. And I at that time had had I was had, I think I had gotten through the best year program. And now I was working directly with a teacher who was teaching me space clearing, and he teaches all over the world, right. And I was like, astonished about how amazing it felt to do this work. So the way I got into it, Ashley, is I started <laughs> offering like space clearing sessions to my client, my customers at this wine bar, like the one like the regulars, you know, not just any like Joe Blow, right? <laughs> but yeah. this one would like, uh, um, uh, like, I'd be like, hey, do you want? And I was, this is what blew me away. Like they would come back like the next week or a couple of days later or whatever. And they'd be like, you're never going to believe it. Like, you know, the kids have stopped fighting. Like our health has changed. Like we feel great. Like we've been cleaning up and doing decluttering. Like something's completely shifted. And I was like as surprised as anyone. I was like, you're kidding me. And so I just kept going with it and I just kept offering it. And I just kept seeing results. And one thing led to another. <laughs> That's awesome. And so then at that point, you kind of caught on to being able to kind of help real estate agents too, and offering that service to kind of our industry as well. Yeah, it was kind of a wild um, trajectory, but um, yeah. how it really happened was um, back in 2018, I got invited to speak at a 100 person real estate breakfast. And um, I didn't really know there was going to be that many agents there, to be honest with you, but I was really excited for this event. And I went in and um, there was like a little round table discussion between me, one other gal, and then this, and then the, the man who was leading the, the discussion. And, um, and I could just, Ashley, I could just see with the people in the audience that they just completely understood what I was talking about when I was talking about energy and spaces and properties not selling. And it was that moment on, I'll never forget it because it was 10 31, 2018. And from that moment on, like, I just had like, like real estate agents are, are my number one client base because when yeah. homes are selling, it's not a good thing. Right. Yeah. When they look great and well, you've done everything, like what is going on? 
Well, yeah, and sometimes you walk into the space and you do know the history, right? And you want to kind of clean slate that for, you know, going to market, or if you're representing a buyer, clean slate the house for them, right? It's like a new, new energy, new space, new feel. You want it to feel as new as possible. Yes. Yes. And what I found was that a lot, like, like agents, so many agents are so perceptive and they're very intuitive and they already have what I was talking about with myself is like that deep sensitivity to like um, what's living in the space, you know, as far as the energetics and the emotions and the thoughts and the experiences and traumas and the whole range, but they don't necessarily want to deal with it. Like, themselves <laughs> they're not they're, they don't want you know they're or like, don't, don't know how right and don't know how yeah um, and and I can understand that because it took me decades to really get to a place where I feel like there's no there isn't any property that I couldn't go into and like impact a change be, but it's it's um it's challenging because space clearing the energy that you know that the working with the energy is all about the perceiving of it and the feeling of it and so if if you don't want to like feel uncomfortable stuff like you shouldn't do space clearing <laughs> and yeah. I think a lot of people are like what and I'm like yeah because it's all about connecting in with the that energy and then like having influence and being able to to like give it this moment and this opportunity to change Nice. What? So that's a good segue into kind of what your process is then. Um, if yeah. you're good with talking about that, because I know, and probably every house is different in terms of, you know, you're, you have a general approach, but it's different based on the reactions and the different things that you're feeling. Yeah. Um, the, what is my process question is like the hardest question sometimes that I get, I think, um, because, you know, it's, um, it's, it's like so simple. It takes a lifetime to explain my, my, my teacher used to say. Um, and, and I think I, like, I like to start off with like some nuts and bolts. And like, one of those are that I don't use Palo Santo and I don't use salt, salts, although I used to like use these to burn stuff in the beginning. I don't do that anymore. Um, I don't use like bells and whistles. I don't use crystals. I don't use crystals. I don't use St. Joseph's, even though I know mm -hmm. a lot of agents and do, and I don't judge for that. Like, I'm like, okay, you do you, if that's what's working, but my process is very, very different than that. Um, and oh, another one that's in bolt because people always ask is that I, I always, I always just kind of like budget about two hours with a home, you know, just to kind of like, if you were going to see a psychologist for the first time, you'd have like that that like time to sit in and to answer the questionnaire and to get to know the home and to, and to see what the issue is. And then like, that's how it feels to me. Like the home is getting a nice big therapy session, you know? Um, but my, my job when I go in a home is um, I describe it like a Venn diagram where like there's these, um, these three, or if the client is there, oftentimes real estate agents don't, they don't want to stick around for it. That's totally fine. So it's like me in the home. Right. And then when I walk into the home, because I've been invited to the, into the home, like we're now in the part in the, in, in between where the circles are overlapping and that's, and I call that shared space. And so when I walk into the shared space, we're in what I call one informational field. And so when I'm in the field, all of a sudden I start getting all of the information from the home and I start reading it and people are like, how do you know that? And I don't like to use the term like psychic or anything like that. I'm just like, you know, we all think we're all separate and that we're all individuals and, and in some terms we all, but there's also the paradox of us all being in one shared moment you know, and in one shit, you know, like there's one thing going on kind of a thing. Right. And so the reason I say that is because when I go in and I connect with a space that way, I'm like, Whoa, I start feeling so much information. And all of a sudden, like I'll be in a kitchen and I'll just start getting pictures of what has gone on. And like, sometimes it'll be like 1950s or, oh, 1980s or two, 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 or, or I'll see something about the land or I'll be like, whoa. And I just start feeling and sensing into that information on such a deep level that the connection of that actually has like kind of a transmutation effect. Like, like it feels like it got to be touched, heard, seen and connected with, and then it lets go 
it lets go of like these bubbles of information that are existing on the timeline. And I see spaces just like transform and shift right before my very eyes. Like they become brighter and they become clearer. They become quieter. I can feel like a settling down. I often like feel like I'm processing grief or anger or the whole range of emotions. And then I just, speaking of process, tour the home that way. I just go from like room to room to room um, and, and peel away at these layers. And uh, after a couple hours, like the home starts feeling really, really different. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. And so you said every, basically every room could have a different feeling and you have kind of different um, and I, and I know even in the history in which you've done, um, these for me, um, you know, you've nailed, I guess, what may have occurred, let's say if I knew the client prior or I had some sort of history, uh, what maybe their general situation, um, was of why maybe they left or maybe what went on in the home. Um, you actually have, have hundred percent nailed those different scenarios and situations. Um, and then you, you have a write up that you send afterwards, just kind of giving your, your thoughts and feelings of that. But, um, you know, it's, it's been kind of amazing to have you walk into these homes and be like, you know, some of them like, well, wow, how did you know that? Like, no one would know that really walking into it, other than maybe a general feeling. Um, and maybe it's, you know, some aesthetics kind of contribute to that or whatnot, but really the, um, focus on the energy would never know what the actual history was of the homeowners or maybe what the space had went through. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I'm really grateful. I have to honestly say to real estate agents because of them not staying in the environment, yeah. like not because what happened is that like, like a lot before the moment that where I just got a lot of real estate business and then that's continued and that's been wonderful. Um, I used to mainly work with people in their own homes, right? And then I would kind of hear the narrative of what was had gone on and all of that. Then when that shifted and real estate agents were like, bye, or like, here's your key code. Here's the keys. You know? <laughs> I, I literally actually was like, well, what am I going to tell them? I mean, I'm charging yeah you know, fee, I'm doing this service. And you know, I can't just say, oh, I cleared your property, you know, mm -hmm. as well. And it really deepened my work so much to be able to just like, like puzzle out and just feel and just to, to trust mm -hmm. like the, the imagery and the feelings and the sensations. And then I just stir, like you said, Put it writing. in writing, putting it in writing and, yeah. and like, and like, and it just comes out kind of like a little bit like a story form. Mm -hmm. And um, there was these two clients that were with me one day and they, they, they had, they, their home had been staged, but they were the ones that had hired me to clear because they were like, there's just something that they were, oh, I know they were really attached to their home. Like they really loved it, but they were moving and they were happy about the move. And, but they were like, we just know that we need some, like we need to get our energy out of this home, you know? So they hired me and I was in this one room that was staged like an office, but I kept like, like pivoting like this. And I'm like, and they were at the door. They were like standing in the doorway, like watching me. And I'm like, and I just kept looking and I'm like, there's something like, and, I, and then I looked at him and I'm like, your desk wasn't here. It was over there. And I go, and then, and I just, and I like literally told them exactly the layout of how it had been when they had lived there. And yeah. they're like, <laughs> but it was so oh. obvious to me, Ashley. I was like, it's yeah. so, like, cause the energy was just pulling me right into one direction. And then, and then it just fell into place. And then, then yeah. I was like, oh, okay, you know, this is why I'm standing over here. This is why I feel pulled over here. Yeah. That's where the energy is. Yep, definitely. Do you have anything else in your process that you kind of want to mention? There's this one thing that I think is really important to mention because, I, and when I get a referral from someone, I'm always so grateful when the person that's referred me has told the person that re they're referring this to me uh, it, about this. And that is that um, because like the work is very, um, like I'm using uh, like the element of consciousness, right? And, uh, and awareness to connect into this the, the, the dynamic of energy that's like we have downloaded into our spaces our experiences boom 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 angry 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 upset 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 covid 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 health wellness you know the whole range right like boom, like in our spaces and then our spaces start to feel rattled and like ah uh, well 
when I go and work with a space, like I feel that and it's not just like, ah, you know, but what happens is that I often like my eyes start watering a lot. My nose runs, I get really, really burpy. And then, you know, my, you know, and it's just, it's just, it's just what happens. Like the body needs to process it. And I did find out like early on in my practice that, um, in 5,000 year old, like Chinese medicine, like five element theory, like it actually talks about how the body like detoxifies and processes information through eye watering, no nose, um, nose running, burping, yawning. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I was like, Oh, thank God. But, um, yeah, but yeah. I always <laughs> tell people before I get started, because we'll have like a conversation. Yeah. And I guess belch. There. <laughs> well, and then like, okay, but then I can kind of see myself starting to like feel into the space. And yeah. I'm like, tell you something they're like what and I'm like okay so I'm feeling all, I'm feeling all this and it's gonna start yeah. happening start burping a lot and they're like what <laughs> but then they do too a lot like the clients uh -huh. are like oh they can like you know if it's their spaces they feel connected and yep. they start in energy too good I was hoping you were gonna you were gonna touch on that today too, that is, <laughs> that's an interesting part of your process <laughs> yes good so now yeah. moving on, do you have any like um, special cases that you've had in the past with the energy space work um, that, you know, either spooky or just kind of, you know, bizarre that kind of shocked you? Oh, so many. Um, uh <laughs> so many I mean, energy work is really shocking sometimes like it's like yeah. I can't I mean if I had a dollar for every time I said I can't believe that just happened um, <laughs> but I have a kind of a fun story and um I had a real estate agent refer her clients to me and it was asked after the house had, had sold and it was kind of a young couple and they had bought their very first ever home and they were like in love with this home. And I guess like around nine months or so had gone by and it was over in West Seattle and they were like, we're going to sell, like we can't take it anymore. And apparently like one of the guys worked, I mean, the, 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 it was a male, female partner, a partnership a marriage. And then, um, the, the man worked in tech and the woman worked in banking, you know? So, and they were like, we, we don't, I mean, well, actually the, the, the woman wouldn't show up because she was so scared, but what was going on was that they like, literally were like, we don't even we can't even believe we're saying this, but we're like literally being terrorized by a ghost. And I'm like, what? Oh my goodness. You know? And like, they, they, there was an upstairs downstairs and they would just like hear this thing running. And it was particularly picking on, they, they, they said the female, like the, the wife. And to the point where she was just had not slept, she did it. And they were, they were just beside themselves and they're like Aww. we're, we're going to move like we can't take it anymore like yeah. our dream home but we just can't take it so the man met me at the home and he's like I just can't even believe I'm here right now doing this but like we don't even know what else to do da, da, da. and so I kept telling him you like ghost energy is really unique like it doesn't clear in the way like a lot of the other kinds of energy like emotional energy or earth energy or technology energy clears it it needs an actual um and he's an actual human system to disconnect through. Okay. So that kind of sounds a little bit weird, but it's just, it's really sad too. So if anybody mm -hmm. ever thinks they have a friendly ghost, like, no, you want to actually like, like help the ghosts go because they just, they're not supposed to be a disembodied aspect of themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. So I definitely like picked up on this ghost and I described him perfectly because they had had a psychic come out earlier, like, like a month earlier who told them exactly who this guy was hanging out. But then I was like, the guy didn't like, 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 like work with, and he was like, no, he, they just told us everything about the ghost. And then the guy left and I'm like, that's so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I told the guy, the client, I go, listen, when, you know, the, go when this, when this disembodied energy is ready to go, it, you'll see it because I like, I'll get very animated and it'll feel, mm -hmm. whoosh, it'll, it'll feel really obvious. You'll see a, like a big, releasing basically. Yes. Yeah. And he's like, okay. Okay. And then it got really, really, really quiet. Like we were just hanging out, kind of talking about the space and kind of, you know, just, which is kind of like, you kind of have to be a little bit like, mm -hmm. uh, Ooh, ooh, with ghost energy, you can't be so direct. Like they don't want that often. And, um, and all of a sudden, like it just got like pinpoint quiet. And the ghost, 
I can't believe I'm laughing. That's not really, I mean, it is kind of funny, but it didn't actually come through me. It went right through him. And like, I'm looking at this guy and he goes <laughs> like, I mean, you can imagine this guy in tech and he's looking at me and he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And like, I mean, and I kid you not, Ashley, his hair, oh my God. Like, like his whole like little hair, like everything got fluffy. Like it went whoop. And, oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. And he was like, you know what the age was that and I was and then I was like yeah you just did it you know and yeah you it. and he was and then yeah. literally this happens almost every time like he just like burst out crying and he was like oh my Aww. god I feel so I, I feel, I'm he was like so grateful and he was so happy and you could totally feel the difference in the home and the whole thing and so it ended up being a happy story but it was <laughs> did they the wife come back and everything went away and it was good yeah it was all good Sweet. yeah yeah, That's there's a, a whole story one. with the guy and why he was there, but I won't get into that right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's a great story. Do you have any other ones you want to touch on? Oh, um, I love Harry Gum. I could do this all day long. <laughs> <laughs> you should have your own little podcast about all these different different um, situations you find yourself in. I I know I could. I mean, there's so many like really, uh, honestly, sort of dark stories about because ghosts yeah. kind of can be kind of complicated and whatnot. But yeah, I I definitely I'll I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Like I, like in the beginning, y- you have to acclimate your body. You know, like mm-hmm. you really have to like like whoa, I'm not used to feeling that. You know, and so if you if you aren't, then you want to like give your t- your body time to metabolize what you're tuning into, right? Mm-hmm. So that said, like way early on, I, um, I was up in Bellingham doing a clearing and I really was very young in my little baby energy worker days. And, and the clients were very kind of like bossy with me and like, oh, but we just need you to tr- look at one more thing and da, da, da. And I was like, not so as boundary as I am, like not as containerized as I am now around like my process and knowing exact, you know, knowing what work. I wasn't like mm-hmm. being boss lady in that moment, you know, like, you know, and I, so I kept tuning in, I kept, t- and I just could, I could just feel like that I had like gone beyond my threshold. Mm -hmm. I was still working at the wine bar at the time. And so I drove from Bellingham to Ballard to go to work. And I walked in and, um, my co my coworker, um, she was also the manager. She goes, what the heck? And I go, what? And she's like, uh, like you need to go look in the mirror. And I was like, okay. Okay. And so I went to the, I went to, um, (laughs) I went to the bathroom and I mean, it's not the greatest story because it's kind of gross, but like, I just had an eye that was like completely, like, it looked like I put like, like yellow, like it was like yellowed out. Like my whole oh. eye was yeah. just, it was like, and it just, it was so weird and puffy and yellow. And like, it actually looked like it had like, like something had stuck to it. And I was like, oh my goodness, like what? <laughs> that and I just and I started to feel really chilled and really freaked out and um and the reason why it's kind of like a good story to share is because I went home they, I mean I couldn't like wait on people that night right no. and I went home and I emailed my teacher who I think was like in Switzerland at the time or something like that and I'm like I've had a really weird thing happened and and he was like and I wrote a blog about it actually called mm-hmm. lifting lifting beyond your weights you know because I had just done too much, you know, and I just tuned in too hard and I just stayed in the field too long. And I didn't give my body a break to about my body, a chance to really metabolize everything that was feeling into. And I went home and it was like around four o'clock. And I remember waking up the next, the, like the whole, whole, whole next day, like at six, like my body just needed like 14 hours of sleep. And I woke up and I felt good and refreshed, but like I had definitely lifted beyond my weight set on that. (laughs) What happened since, but it was really like, what the heck? Like just to see something just that had like manifested right on my face. And the fact that you didn't even feel it or couldn't even like, you didn't even know it was someone you know, that told you there was, no, issue. I mean, I was, I, I remember feeling really out of it on the way home okay. from, from, from Bell. I just was like, kind of like in a little bit of an altered state. Like I was like, Oh, like I just don't. And I just kind of was like, I just get to work, you know, and the whole thing. Yeah. yeah it was pretty crazy. Oh gosh. 
So um, we did have a question though of your previous story. Um, was did you ever find the reason why the guy was stay, still hanging around the house? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, Do you want he, to share that or no? Yeah. He, <laughs> okay. Um, the he he had um, it was in West Seattle, and he had been in um, the he had been associated with like mar, like the mar, whole marine industry, mm-hmm. and he he had spent and so it, and he he was the original owner, and I had spent every last dime on this home for his himself and his his child, and it was his like pride and mm-hmm. joy, and he had lived there they had lived there their entire life, and then um and that was like maybe early early ish 1900s or whatever, like 1920s or 30s or something. And then they had sold the home. He, you know, had, uh, he, he, they'd sold the home and, um, they had some extremely unsavory people that had lived there, like Mm -hmm. really abusive to the home. And the man had like kind of like never like he was so attached to the home that he like like he didn't go away and so when these other people moved in and were really un like big time drug use rough. Yeah. rough you know like he was really this disembodied you know person like that he just stayed attached to the home kind of like a good ghost you know in a way mm-hmm. ghost turned bad maybe I don't know um but he I mean but he he was just upset he was so upset and it's exactly what the psychic had said before too right that the guy was like really upset you know and um and he, and so those people eventually like the house had gone into I can't remember what it's called like on a short sale closure yeah or closure yeah, yeah. Had or gone closure. Closure yeah. exactly, and um, and that's when these two people came in. But the guy was like not having any of it. Like he just had felt like, like completely upset and um, and da- you know um, damaged. Yeah, you know, like he was just like, no, that was my pride and joy. These people yeah. ruined it. Da da da. And so he was he was reactive to that. Did he yeah. pass away in the house? That was another question. <laughs> um. I don't remember that detail. Got I don't it. Think it'd be, I can't remember. He could. And you've had you've had those situations though too. One of the stories you told me is you you were it's a condo that you were clearing out and I guess the the lady had passed away in in the home oh, too. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and the way that it was staged was that um like they'd had they like the 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 um the real estate agent had put like this big like this chair like right where she had had her kind of like, like where she had convalesced basically. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I just sat in that chair and it was like, she'd gone through a lot of, um, chemo and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I just remember just feeling like, like, wow, like chemo has like a really specific signature to it too. Like medicine does RX mm-hmm. in general. And so I just was like, like, wow. And I just could not, I just kept telling her, like, there's something about that one area of the home, like right in the living room, like right da, 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 where it's just was so heavy. And so, I mean, and, and it wasn't because she wasn't ready to go, you know, like she was ready to go. Uh, and she was like at peace with it. She wasn't hanging yeah. out. It was just a feeling, but it was because of everything that she had gone, mm-hmm. gone, gone, like gone through right on that spot, you know, like right in that little like ge- geographical area inside her unit. Yeah. Yeah. And so you gravitated towards that because that was a feeling that you had. The agent didn't tell you that that's where it had happened or where she had been. No. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. Agents love to not tell me anything. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I know. I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. So as far as, well, actually I, w- I have a question for you. So, you know, people, um, when you tell them what you do and you kind of go into these stories and whether it's, you know, the ghost energies or the other different types of energies or whatnot, um, do you ever get people who are very opposed to the, this type of thinking or maybe what you, you know, what you do? Um, do you ever see that opposition or people just don't quite understand? Oh yeah. All the time. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think that sometimes like, you know, like a husband and wife will hire me or a, a partners will hire me. And like, one of them is like, I, mm. I don't know what, this is super yeah. crazy. We're spending money on this or whatever. Yeah. And, um, and, and I really, 
I really work so hard, I think, to communicate to people um, how I feel about energy, which is so um, like, like just very normal language, you know, and mm -hmm. very, I mean, I know that it is a little bit esoteric still, a little bit on the woo-woo side, but I never, I just think of it as like um, anyone who's been to like a Seahawks game and you walk, or or a Pink concert or Taylor Swift or whatever, and you go in, you're like, oh my gosh, like you immediately, you're like, whoa, like you just get caught up in the, you know, mm -hmm. energy, you know, and it's like, there, there, there's a whole field of like, energy around us all the time and and we humans influence it all the time you know in big arenas or you know the other example that I use is like oftentimes people like you know you go you, you're going like say you go into your workspace and you go you get into a meeting and you walk in you walk in you're a few minutes late and you're like whoa mm -hmm. was there just like a heavy convert like what just happened in this conference room like something is amiss you know that's energy too you know so we, you know or we know that the energy of like how how like oh my god that space feels so great right and so I just try and distill it down into terms of that makes sense to people that they can like relate. simplifying basically yeah they can relate yeah. to yeah um, and and then some people aren't just you know there's not it just isn't their language and that's fine too um and I still you know my work is still impactful whether they believe it or not you know mm -hmm. so oftentimes it's really funny because there's a lot oftentimes it is the exact person who doesn't believe in it, who is having like the big experience with it. And I, I, I love when that happens where I'm like, something's going on for you during this appointment. And they're like, yes, you know, and they are like, I, I don't know what's going on, but this is, you know, they're feeling something. They, they feel it. Imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, and that's again, a good segue into how, so if someone's in their home and they feel like something, what are the feelings, I guess, or triggers that they would have to know that maybe they need to bring you in to kind of clear the, clear the space. Because there anything that you tell, you know, that are indicators there that people could use? Yeah. I mean, I think um, there's so many, but like people who have had so, like a trauma occur in the home, or um, I get a lot of people that hire me because um, like the home that they're moving into, maybe there was a divorce that occurred there or they're, or they're leaving because there was okay. a divorce situation you know they're going through a divorce um I get people who like aren't sleeping well dogs that like I, I had a family that hired me because their dog they've never had any problems with their dogs at all and then all of a sudden they move to a new home and the dogs will not settle like pets are so sensitive like cats yep cats, cats too <laughs> to energy yeah um, I've been, I, I, you know, I don't mean to make light of it, but I've been calling it COVID homes lately because COVID mm -hmm. really changed the grid of a lot, like how a lot of homes feel mm -hmm. and like, they just don't like, they, like the homes were like, what are you doing here all the time? Like just there's, there's like, I call it the trifecta of irritation, agitation, and frustration. Like that just like, you just walk into the home and you're like, Oh, you know, that is a, you know, like to, to get some of that dynamic out of it is really, is really good. Um, there's also this thing, and I'm going to write about it here. I've got a, like a, a, um, an article I'm working on about, about, um, your home either being too yin or too yang. And mm -hmm. those are like Chinese medicine terms and whatever, but they're really, really important because in very simplified terms, like the yin is the quieter, calmer, it's represented by the moon, the color black, the underneath the earth, you know, emotions, softness, um, the seed in the ground, energy, right? And you know, we all know the symbol, like the yin and mm -hmm. yang right and then the yang is like boom bursting out energy um represented by sun represented by the verb do you know go like mm -hmm. ah. um well we all have a representation of yin and yang in our homes too and sometimes our homes are too yinny and sometimes they're too yang right and if you have a too yinny home um it, it can just be too lethargic like too sleepy not enough like pep not enough get up like mm -hmm. oh, really you know you have company over they don't want to leave you know like oh you know it's too too 
<laughs> right? If you have too much yang in your home, you might be sleeping, but you're not like getting the REM sleep, you know, mm -hmm. like you're just too activated. Like the home has got too much electricity, like, like too much, ah, there's too much, um, 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 Any vibration. Yeah. What's that? Like a vibration. Yeah. Yeah. It's those, it's the energetics of the yeah. home. How mm -hmm. it feels like the vibration of like, uh, you know, ee, you know, you're mm -hmm. not down, you, you get to go to project uh, uh, da, 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 da. and that can be like bad for people because then they don't like their, your bodies need time to like rest and repair and heal up. And if your, your environment is too amplified, it can't do that. Right. If your, vi your environment is too low in energy it isn't either yeah. so you kind of want like it between what i call a 40 60 range of yin yang like you want because it, with the it, with 40 60 you always get the perpetuation of growth you know because mm -hmm. you can turn over you know, 50 50 it's like eh, eh. but a lot of times that's not occurring in people's spaces for a number of reasons i mean like energy is very much um about also repetition. And so if you've got patterns that exist in your home and they might, they might be like old just because they've had time to mature. And then we kind of keep thinking those things, like you've got a worrier and then the worrier just keeps worrying and worrying and worrying. And then that mm -hmm. worrying over years and decades just becomes like, oh, like the home just feels really full it's of worry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, like it just, you kind of, mm -hmm. You don't need then those people any 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 there in their energetic systems. And then you have someone new come into the home and they're like, say they're looking at it. They walk right through the door. I want this home. It checks all the boxes. We love it, love it. But they're like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. There's something I don't like about how this home feels. Yep. Like they're not a worrier, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so then how, so with the yin and yang or the uh, ratio that you were just talking about, like how do you, I guess balance that and that's that's because the people themselves in the house have that energy correct not the items within the home it's just the energy that's living in the, the energies home. yeah yeah and so um i always i kind of like to describe it as like when i walk into a home with a client i always ask them to imagine like a big huge white piece of paper like mm -hmm. the blank piece of paper, like, like a big billboard, but billboard. And I go, imagine like, okay, your home, your home was built in 1975 and now it's 2023. Okay. And then uh, across this big banner of white piece of paper, imagine that everything, I mean, this is quantum physics get a little bit, you know, but like, imagine that every thought, everything that's happened, every belief, every emotion, every experience, all of the life events, all the world events, everything that you've had to process or whatever, good, bad, and indifferent is like spans the timeline of this piece of paper, like millions and millions of black dots, right? Then Imagine again that along this timeline, like 1975, 2023, there's like what I call heavily blotted dots, like mm, mm, like inky yep. spots. Those are where like traumas occurred or big bigger events, events you know, bigger yep. events, right? So, um, you know, you might only be living in the home from like 19, not only, but like um, nine, you know, 19. 99 to 2023 20, or what you know at, at any time but you're but you could still be coexisting with all of those dots all of that information plus what you've added to it right mm -hmm. so then my job is to go in and I call it just lifting the dots off the page so that you're timelining it all the way forward to like right here right now you know like whatever the date October 27th 2020 oh, clean yeah you're yeah clean slate exactly so it gives those homeowners and the and the uh, owner occupants like oh my gosh okay like we've cleared, <laughs> we've cleared it all yeah yes. mm -hmm. um we had another question here that's um like are there things we could do for ourselves when we encounter negative feelings in a home so if you're in your home versus you know maybe just little things that you could think of um that someone could do um I, I'm a really big believer in intention and um, I, I think speaking to our homes has, and really getting to know them in a more animated version is really powerful. So I tell people to like, talk to your homes, you know, like um, 
when you uh, when when you come in and when you leave and like looking around at what at what you've got in your environment and like kind of developing I don't I think we were just I think we're also used to just kind of barging into our homes a little yeah. bit I do it too you know but like stopping and pausing and being um like bringing the home into the conversation um with with it being like a part of our lives like a big part of our lives and another thing and I don't know people don't usually like when I say this but I am a really really I mean if you want to change the energy of your home faster than anything start clutter clearing (laughs) I mean it's so powerful like I I used clutter clearing as a coping mechanism when I was a kid and it was like like there there is not it is so it's such a pristine way to like clarify the energy in your space and don't do a little like a lot at a time like that is the number one buzzkill for like like being able to like balance out energy you have I mean even just one little drawer because it makes you feel so different and it drops such like a different signal in your home when you've given attention to something Mm -hmm. to something like to the things in your home because your things that are living in your home like they're all carrying energy too at times and like oftentimes they don't even represent who we are right here right now on October 20th they're like I mean, I work with people all the time. They're like, I have no idea why I have this, you know? I mean, it's no, (laughs) like, I'm not judging them or anything, but they just don't know why they have what they have. And so you got all of this like stale energy all throughout your home, just because you, we don't, it's not an easy, it's not an easy, easy thing to deal with. So the easiest thing to deal with, with regard to that part of like how you can shift the energy yourself with, with clutter clearing is, is just to, just to um, say it one more time is really just do tiny little portions at a time. Like, mm-hmm. like just do, you know, the, the little basket where your brushes are, you know, I mean, like just do your sock drawer. I mean, and do it with an, like literally go through it and be like, I wonder what's here. This mm-hmm. is really fascinating. Yeah. Do That's one, sh- you know, like either your refrigerator or your freezer, but not both, you know, I mean, and just, just chip away at it basically and make yeah. sure that you have intention while you're doing it. You're not just doing to do it. Yeah. So you're doing it because yeah. you're like, I will, I really want this home to represent, like, I really want it to feel good in here. Yeah. Nice. So is, th- is that a part of what you do for the Stephology services? Yeah, that's my stuffology work. Yeah, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. And you actually do it with the homeowner um, or the resident and you go through and kind of give them consults on on the things that they, they can do. Yeah, we work, I only work, I mean, I don't only, but like I do two hour um, time segments when I do stuffology with people because I don't want them to, I want them to have gas in the tank at the end of it. I want them to have like yeah. a positive experience of it, not like, mm-hmm. oh, so draining. Well, yeah, but to-do it, list, to-do list, to-do you know? list. Yeah. And, um, a lot of times like people just feel like that's a drudgery topic, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think it's the most illuminating thing to see why we have what we have. And so if I can get people to like fall in love a little bit with like the process of it, which they are always so astonished that they like liked it more than they thought they would. And just do little segments again at a time, two hours. Um, and then we just go, we, they're like, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? And we just have a conversation. We just pick a little area. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I literally just, um, stick with them the entire time. I don't, you know, so it's so funny because people are like, oh, I just found this, you know, I'll be right back. I'm going to go put it back. And I'm like, no, 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 because I I don't want them to like divert in that way. Yeah. uh, It just breaks the circuitry a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I have like a little system that I use, uh, a very powerful system of how we stay containerized Mm -hmm. so that they can, they can, and they love it. People love it. It's really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I should do that. (laughs) (laughs) I've not, I've not done that one. I should do that. (laughs) Um, So we're probably going to wrap up here. I think we hit everything that we wanted to talk about. And then I just had one other question for you. Do you have any uh, recommendations for maybe books or any podcasts or anything that kind of is geared towards um, energy clearing or energy work? Okay. So you could go to Nicole Kincaid.com. That's me. Yes. I, I write about it. All, I write about it all the time. <laughs> I love to, um, you know, I have, I I'll be really honest. I've been really challenged to find, um, people who do the work 
in the way that I do the work. And I, I don't mean to sound like, oh, my way is the only way, but like it is unique and I don't use the whole, um, I don't use tools, right? And it's very easy to like, feel like we we need apparatuses to like shift things. Well, then what if you don't have that with you? Like then you can't, uh-huh. you know, um, my, I should say that um, my, my teacher is amazing. He's um, a little, elusive I guess you could say he lives in Europe and um he doesn't come to the Amer- he doesn't come to the United States anymore but his name is Eric Dowsett ironically uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> dot com and he's great he's got some books and stuff like that but um yeah I I, I love to share the information check out my, gotcha. my website. well you're kind of pioneering uh or pioneer of your your own field so that doesn't surprise me that there's a lot of people and there's a lot of different approaches to this we talked to the about this a little bit before where you have kind of more the shaman and the, you know, the people that do all the, the various things yeah. um, and, and you are focusing on something that's, that's different. So yeah, there are, yeah. There are different ways to do this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Thank you. I think that that's all from me and we'll also post all your contact information, of course, so people could reach out to you directly um, yeah. if they have any questions. So you're so lovely. I love chatting with you and I could probably spend an extra hour just like picking your brain and hearing your stories. Thanks. I was really a fun conversation. I enjoyed it very much. Sweet. Good. Well, thank you so much. All right. You guys have a good one. Bye. Bye.